a care for mental health and the physical health in the same facility. And we call it, you know, Hope Center uh, Integrated Clinic. Then in the same Hope Center, we, we are, are going to have a rest house of approximately 25 rooms where uh, patients can retire into uh, for recovery and their relatives or friends who come to take care of them can also stay in those places. And also people who are coming to see the physicians or the mental health care workers from different parts of the country can fly to the airport, which is close to the Hope Center and stay in the rest house and you know, um, uh, um, see their physicians and their mental health specialists. So the Hope Center is also going to have a pharmacy the pharmacy will provide uh, uh, um, the, you know, medications for the hospital and also retail services for the community. We already have a water factory, which is a project we instituted to enable us uh, be sure of the sustainability of the project, the Hope Center project, because the 100% proceed or the profit from this water factory will help us to sustain the Hope Center buildings. We are also um, going to have a diagnostic center, uh, which we hope in the next uh, one year we will realize. And then the hospital medical clinic is already in place. Can we go to the next slide, please? So this is the location. So the Hope Center is located approximately uh, three minutes drive to the International uh, Cargo Airport in Imo State, Nigeria. Uh -huh. Next slide, please. So this is the water factory. So we have started production. Uh, hopefully you can see the bottles here, hanging here. So we manufacture bottle, you know, we bottle the water and also uh, we produce what we call sachet water. Hopeful, we are hopeful that uh, we will raise approximately $5,000 profit every month when we reach the peak of uh, this project. Next slide, please. So these are the services we intend to offer for now, and we hope to expand as we you know, navigate, you know, through the resources that will be available to us. So we are going to be dealing with general medicine, internal medicine, child and maternal care, uh, gynecological cases, eye care, and mental health for now. Next slide, please. So this is what the pharmacy will be provided. Prescription for patients and retail for community members. Next slide. So we are going to also have a conference hall, which is going to be on the topmost floor of the uh, diagnostic center. And uh, hopefully it will provide a space for meetings for our Nigerian doctors, our international doctors. And also now we are hoping to um, receive international students from all over the world. But presently we are signing a, a contract with two universities. We are still working internally with the, with the two universities from California uh, who will be sending some of their students to learn, uh, you know, about African healthcare uh, systems. Next slide, please. So this is what the rest house is all about. Patients can retire uh, in the rest house and visiting mental health you know, patients can also be there to see their uh, specialists. Families can also stay there when visiting their family, you know, loved ones. Next slide, please. So we, we're actually working on the kitchen now. In the next two weeks, the, what we call the Iowa kitchen will be in place. In fact, I've been working on this since I arrived in Nigeria on the 18th. So uh, we are working on the kitchen. It's going to be an outdoor, uh, you know, eating spaces with grass roof. It's going to be very local and beautiful. And those who are traveling to Nigeria 
in March, uh, we'll enjoy you know, the, that facility. So hopeful, we are hopeful that the restaurant will provide um, services to the patients and their loved ones and to also outsiders. And we are going to make some money here that will also help us to sustain the facility. Next slide, please. So this is already uh, what our factory is realized. We actually completed this in February this year. It was a COVID uh, pandemic that made us to start production very late. And then the hospital in the next is already completed, you know, to an extent. So we are doing cleanup now. And hopeful, we are hopeful that we will do the grand opening on the 8th of March this year. So pharmacy waiting for foundation uh, with a rest house. And this one, the, the kitchen, the restaurant, like I said, in the next three weeks, it will be concluded. Next slide, please. So sustainability, uh, the IWA Vita and the student volunteer programs will help us to sustain that project. Plus the kitchen, which we have added, and we are hopeful we are going to add, I don't know, I don't know what we call that in the United States. We call it um, code room. Code room is the name we know here. We have, you can store fish or beef and you pay for that. We have carved out if, you know, part of the facility for that. And we are looking forward to establishing the code room in the next seven months, which is also going to be part of the sustainability uh, program for the Hope Center. Somebody is saying, we call it a walk-in freezer or refrigerator. Thank you, Emily. Okay, next slide, please. So we're already aware of this. We're already aware of this. Next slide, please. Yeah, we're already aware of this. Next slide, please. I think I've mentioned this. Uh, the international students will be at, you know, uh, having some credits uh, uh, with their hours as they visit Nigeria and the Hope Center. Next slide, please. How you can help us now? So this is why we are here. Um, we are humbly asking for your help to help us equip the diagnostic uh, aspect of the facility. Next slide, please. So these are some of the things we are asking for. Uh, you may not give us all of them now, but you can help us begin to see how we can get either all of them or some of them for now and for uh, or in the future. So um, we have the ultrasound, we are looking for ultrasound, the Vasana Premier 4D with four probes, which is $36,800. Uh, MRI machines, we are still waiting for the bid for this, but when we get that, I will pass it on to Joel. So um, we are also looking for a CT scan, 64 slices, a revolution maxima, which is $526,000, X-ray static unit, an aesthetic anesthesia machine, dialysis machine, um, hemocrite centrifuge, and autoclave. We, there are other stuff uh, we think we might need, but we want to start with these ones. Backup power generator, which is will provide us 200 kVA, which costs about $41,600. Maybe, maybe I would interject here, Kenny. Um, in regard to dialysis, um, there is no uh, uh, countrywide uh, dialysis programs in Nigeria. So um, because of issues with diabetes and high blood pressure and all that, I mean, we really would like to have that facility develop a dialysis program. Um, it's amazing because I think there's only a couple hospitals that, in the whole country that have dialysis. So, thank you, Bev. Play any questions, please. I have a question um, on the backup generator. 
what kind of infrastructure is available to you guys for fueling the generator as far as diesel or gas or uh, hydrogen? Diesel. diesel, diesel, diesel. Yep. We already have one now, which is powering, which is actually powering the, the water factory. And during our mission, it will also help us to power the hospital to an extent. But by the time we install some of these machines, we need something higher, you know, which become a help to what we have already. And I, I think for a lot of people on, on the, uh, it, that maybe didn't see my presentation when I did this uh, several months ago, um, this area of Nigeria is fairly rural. And a lot of these people that come to this, the Hope Center, do so because they've never had uh, any kind of medical care for for certain problems in their entire lives and there's a there's a sort of an investment that happens when someone cannot pay their hospital bill in Nigeria so there's a fear that if there's no means to pay the bill uh, that you, you you don't go to get care and so that's what uh, Father Kenny has really helped uh, to establish and Iwa is really uh, trying to do and Bev um I know they want to do some Q&A, but if you want to interject maybe some of your experiences that when you've traveled over there too, I think some of the stories about the people that have helped, that have been helped. Yes, I mean, when we, I remember our first mission when there were, um, I forget how many uh, surgeries uh, that took place with like hernias, but people had gone decades and never had their hernias addressed, had never had any medical care at all. And so when we had, the, these were Nigerian surgeons that were there that did a whole raft of uh, hernia surgeries from little kids uh, who sometimes are working, lifting hard. So they develop hernias on up to, I think the oldest one was 60 some years old. And then during our second mission, we were able to utilize a, an ophthalmologist who was actually the, the director of the hospital. We were at St. Mary's and we did um, a 19, I I believe it was 19 uh, cataract surgeries, one eye, because again, people have cataract blindness because they've never had their cataracts, um, never had the services to do uh, cataract surgery. So we have like, and then uh, in terms of the gynecological issues, the, the high rate of uterine tumors um, in, that, in Nigeria, but really in all of Africa, uh, we had last time uh, probably 30 plus women who had their uterine fibroids um, uh, removed uh, with surgery and then uh, maybe two hysterectomies if they were very bad. And this is, a, this is also a cultural issue uh, because of course, when they have uterine fibroids, they're not able to get pregnant or they will miscarry. And uh, to not be able to bear children is, uh, is a very um, difficult thing for women there. So we've just been very pleased with the, all the women we've been able to help well, with uh, that surgery. Good news there, Bev. Hello, Bev. Yes. Yeah, we have a, a good news there. Uh, Dr. Emily, who is um, representing um, our host club, She's a physician and she's a specialist uh, in, um, um, you know, OBGYN, and uh -huh. she has received so, several international and national awards in that regard. And she's the first person to volunteer her services to the Hope Center Wonderful. clinic. So Wonderful. she's here, here with us. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Emily. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, I'm really glad to be part of this very noble project and um, I'm looking forward to um, the collaboration and uh, I'm sure we'll do a lot more with everybody's uh, efforts on board. I'm sure we'll do a lot more to um, relieve the burden of the people. There is a lot of burden, there's so much poverty but I believe that we can do something. Thank you. Hello. Hey. We lost our, we lost the uh, Father Kenny. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. 
but I'm here. Yes, Emily is there. Is and I think yeah. that's still on, right? So, uh, any, any questions out there from the group uh, concerning um, this endeavor that uh, AWA is trying to trying to achieve? And Bev is still on, and Bev can take questions too. She's, of course, yeah. uh, she's my aunt Bev, and she's the one from Pagosa Springs that's been over there, uh, member of the organization. Hey, Bev, how's the? Um, what kind of fundraising efforts are you guys doing in Pagosa? Because I think when we talked, when you were up here, we talked yeah. a little bit about what Pagosa was trying to do. Um, are you, well, I mean, we, are you we, working with other clubs down there or what's that look like? <clears throat> you know, we've been kind of stymied since COVID, of course, but the club that I belong to is, is very small, but they have made a commitment. We just don't know the number because we have to get back to some fundraising. And then we'll, we'll be talking with the other club in Pagosa. And actually, we were going to try to get to, and I don't know if Lori's on. Um, Lori was contacting a lot of the clubs um, in the southwest part, uh, Durango, Bayfield, those kinds of things, because we had hoped to go visit those clubs and present so that we could get others to join in as well. So that's our goal, is when uh, maybe when COVID... Uh, or the vaccine gets more wide, widely distributed, then we can start making visits to people's group, uh, clubs that are holding meetings. And I know a member of the uh, Durango, one of the Durango clubs, Bev, so if you need some, you probably know all those people, but if you need some introductions, let me know. Oh yeah, I, yeah, we would probably need that. <clears throat> okay. Father Kenny is back on if he wants to unmute. I, I don't think he has more to say, but. You are muted, Father Kenny. Yes, I'm good. Oh, it's dark now. <laughs> it's dark. I lost, you know, welcome to Nigeria. The power <laughs> went off. <laughs> yeah, Father Kenny is actually in Nigeria in, by the Hope Center, and so uh, giving us these developments as they're happening on the ground. So <laughs> I know. <laughs> So any questions from anybody? I don't, I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Uh, Bob, go ahead, unmute. My question is, uh, as you look at the list of uh, significant uh, medical equipment, is, is this, is the plan to, to purchase it somewhere close Europe or someplace like that or or is there a plan to try to find that kind of equipment I know there are some organizations that uh, that take surplus equipment from the government and different places and try to distribute it is it just is the goal to achieve those capacities of MRIs and x-rays or What's the idea to get those pieces of equipment? Okay. Um, I think we, we are open to receiving ideas from people. Okay. What we want is just the equipment. <laughs> so, okay. so, um, so long as it is uh, uh, 240 volts, which is Nigerian power, so if anybody knows anybody who can give us equipment, what we just want are the equipment. Yeah. If, we, if we get the money to buy them from Nigeria, the, our host club will assist us to buy it from Nigeria. If okay. we get equipment in, in the, to the health center, anyhow, we are fine. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Is, is there a priority as to which equipment goes first? Because you wouldn't want to have equipment over there that you couldn't use because you didn't have something else. So, you, you know, you'd have to stage that properly. So it'd be helpful to have some kind of priority list on it, wouldn't it? We can, we can work on that and uh, I'll send it to Joel. What would be the most, Kenny, Father Kenny, what would be the most urgent uh, piece of equipment that uh, currently is kind of uh, limiting what you're able to achieve there that uh, would maybe make the biggest impact first? I know you mentioned priority. 
Yeah. Um, whatever equipment we are going for goes with the power generator. So the power generator has to go with whatever equipment. Now, if we get the CT scan, which even if we get it used one from the United States that is 240 volts, that would be awesome. CT scan and X-ray machine, which will always go with the generator. Because that will, that will make a huge difference to the people. Because people pay a lot and they travel distances to do CT scan. Hey, Father Kenny, those prices that you illustrated on that slide, are those um, incorporating the, the shipping cost or anything to get that to, to your That's in Nigeria. The cost in Nigeria, servicing, one year servicing plan and the cost of delivery. Okay. Joel, this is Rick. Uh, can you go over what uh, our club is trying to achieve in this endeavor? So, Rick, Rick, was that for me or for Joel? That was for Joel. Okay. Joel, did you get that question? Yeah, sorry, I was muted. We had worked with, uh, with Don... Uh, initially and um i set a goal for five thousand dollars for our club was kind of our minimum goal for the year of course fundraising is a little bit tough right now but uh also when uh father kenny and bev came up uh and met with uh phil and and kim uh just to discuss uh possibly some matching grants uh that was part of the goal as well um and kim had a little bit more insight as to uh, how that could be achieved but our, our goal as a club was to help raise funds to, to go toward those uh, equipment needs or uh, finishing rooms. But I think specifically equipment is what we were, what our goal was. And have we uh, got committees together to move forward on achieving that goal? No, nope, uh, I think the committee is just me at this, at the moment for our club. But I don't know, uh, you know, just- I think it's actually, you, it's, it's you and Rob, I think. Uh... Well, Joel. Sorry. Yep. And then uh, one of the get things more you... members involved with your committees and start moving this forward. Absolutely. And I think hopefully it's helpful to have a presentation to kind of uh, get some um, framework around it. And, and uh, like you said, Rick, definitely, I think we can start hopefully moving forward with a little bit this year. And I think some of the stuff that Bev mentioned, it kind of uh, with COVID took us off of our off of our mark in, in a lot of different ways. I know Joel's been, has been swamped with some of his stuff. So is Rob. So, um, you know, with just their various actual day-to-day -day activities that support their families have, uh, um, you know, taken us kind of off track on this. So part of the point of doing this presentation was to kind of re allow us to refocus as Joel mentioned and uh, bring us back on track. So if there's um, members out there that, this uh, this kind of project resonates as a club. Um, we had, when Don was uh, initially started president, this was uh, there was a commitment made to try to get the ball rolling on this. So um, part of my purpose was to kind of reinitiate this at the start of the year here, and then get some things going. So those of you that are out there that are newer members or even some of our seasoned members, if you'd like to get, uh, I would ask you to reach out to Joel or Rob. And uh, let's kind of try to get this ball rolling if we can. And, and I know Kim was uh, very interested in the aspect of um, our integrated care. And I re really want to emphasize that, too, because, you know, for the last 20 years in the states here, you know, we've been trying to move toward integrated care and having mental health care, behavioral health care beyond parity with medical care. And here we have an opportunity um, in Nigeria to to put that in place right as we are developing a new center. So it really, uh, and Kim was quite interested in that. And, and I think that has generated a lot of interest from people who have worked in the medical fields and have seen the need um, to integrate that care. Um, and even, uh, I thought this was when Father Kenny was uh, working on the design of the consultation rooms, the exam rooms, one of the things that, that he um, designed, which really put the behavioral health care on parity was 
the exam room with the exam table is on one end, but the other end of the room is is a, you know, a chair, couch, desk, whatever, kind of a sitting area so that the mental health provider can come into the room as a part of the person's overall exam. And that really is the ideal uh, in integrating behavioral health. Thank you. You know, and one of the things I wanna reference as well, um, one of Joel's family members has actually primed the pump Rotary and has put some uh, uh, money. Uh, we gave some money to the foundation on behalf of a uh, AWAS. So that is the pump has been primed to kind of get this thing you. rolling. Yeah, it's actually uh, a member of the club uh, down in Pagosa gave us a five hundred dollar check uh, okay. to start up. Yeah, that's from Bev's from Bev's club down there. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, so we got a five hundred dollar head start, like you said, Phil. Thanks. Yeah. All right, let me see if there's any other questions. Okay, um, Bev, any, any final, or Father Kenny, um, Emily, any final comments that you'd like to make? Emily, are you there? Is Emily there? Yes, I'm yeah. here. Can you introduce yourself, please? Yes, I'm Emily. I'm Rotarian Emily Missouri Bay. I am an OBGYN at the um, Federal Medical Center. And um, I have a keen interest in oncology, um, particularly with the call to action to eliminate cervical cancer. That's my um, key area of passion. And I'm hoping that um, Iowa will give me the opportunity to maybe once a week or about we lost you. We lost her. Um, program. And, uh, we, hello. Did you lose me? Yes, we lost you. Hello. But we have you now. We have you back. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so, um, well, let me not talk too much. I'm looking forward to really participating in the program, both as a Rotarian and um, as an OBGYN specialist. And so I thank you for the keen interest you are showing. And, um, Looking forward to more collaborations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you Emily. Thank you. All right, in, um, in the chat, for those of you that don't have Joel's email address, um, it's right there in the, put it in the chat for everybody. So if you have any follow-up questions that you'd like to ask Joel, he can, if he doesn't know the answers, he'll make something up. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but he can reach out to Father Kenny or Bev and get some, uh, get yep. those, questions answered and then we will have uh, some we'll try to get some updates going here over the next couple of weeks as far as what's going on but for those of you that are interested um, particularly some of our new members uh, uh, allow you to kind of get engaged in the rotary process I'd encourage you guys to reach out to Joel and uh, so we can get this uh, kind of get this thing kicked off in 2021 and, and get some money coming to Father Kenny or some equipment or whatever we can do. I appreciate uh, your club's interest and uh, thank you for allowing us uh, this opportunity. I appreciate it. You betcha, Bob. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Father Kenny. You betcha, Emily. Thank you. Hi, Joe. Anybody, if anybody wants Hi, to know <laughs> any stories about Joel as a kid, I'm the, I'm the person that can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> He's a very intelligent and gentle child. <laughs> I, yeah. uh, thank you. <laughs> Don't laugh too hard, Bev. <laughs> oh yeah. Everybody get your feet off your uh, off the ground. It's getting deep. <laughs> okay, well hey everybody. Keep the rings and watches. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for uh coming in today. And uh Joel Sheila, thanks for getting this all set up. Definitely. Um and then Annie, good having you from uh Germany. 
Hope to see you again soon, maybe next week. Who knows? Whatever your schedule permits. Um, it was good being here too. Next week is going to be a little bit difficult, but maybe in two weeks I'll be back. Awesome. Be great to see you. <laughs> Happy New Year, Annie. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. I think that does it. And um, if there's if there's not anything else, I'd just like to say, truly an international meeting there, Phil. We got Africa and Europe and United States. What a deal! Yep. There you go. Exactly. Uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I'll feel like a real Rotarian. Club. All in the same club. Yeah. <laughs> same international club. Yeah. If anyone has any ideas for meeting room names, please feel free to email me. <laughs> yep, or if there's any, uh, the other thing too is, you know, this week we were just trying to do some introductions, but if you have ideas on topics, um, if you're in a room, just throw out a topic. Don't feel like uh, in this week, David and I and, and uh, Mr. Rapp were kind of trying to coordinate things in the rooms, but if you jump into a room, and there's only a couple of you just kind of get the uh, conversation flowing. Just throw out any topic that uh, you feel passionate about. And when everybody starts coming in, they'll jump in, I'm sure. The main point of these things, though, is if there's somebody in the room that you don't know, introduce yourself and uh, try to make a point of, um, of meeting new people. That's really the key. And if you know somebody, if you know everybody in the room, then it just gives you more opportunity to find out what the heck they're doing on uh, – with COVID lockdown stuff. So it's all good. All right, guys, I'm gonna let everyone go. Have a great uh, rest of the week and weekend and uh, ding, ding, we're out. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Great to Thank see you. everybody. Everybody take care. Hi. All right, I'm going to end the meeting. Thank you all for joining. <laughs>